Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and over these next couple of videos, we're going to be at working on implementing an inventory system and an item and object system and so on to our game here, to our little survival game. Uh, now, I just quickly want to say I'm not very familiar with making inventory systems. This is not really something I've done a lot. And similar to some of my other tutorials, I'll pretty much be taking this on the fly. So you can also follow along, follow my logic, and also see where I make me make some mistakes and we'll have to debug that. First of all, let's just get started and set up some basic UI. So I'm going to go under UI, going to go under canvas and we're just going to set this up to scale the screen size 1920 by 1080 something like that should be fine and I like it scaling a bit with both width and height and now in the canvas let's make just a new empty we'll just call this inventory for example and let's go into 2d and have a look at our inventory so first things first oops let me enable the gizmos I want to scale this up so that it takes up the whole space uh, you can also do this by hitting uh, down here and then hitting alt, holding alt and clicking it it should scale so that everything says zero 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 so it should scale with the screen size as well uh, and now let's just set up let's do a UI let's do panel and this will be a background I'm just gonna call this BG gonna make it dark maybe a little bit less transparent and we're gonna put it somewhere in here something like so and you can also move the anchor points in case you wanted to stay the same amount of responsive in here so that should hopefully pretty much work now let's uh play around with setting it up a little bit more so i'm gonna set up the grid within the background i'm gonna set up a grid and i'm gonna set that up so that it's somewhat the full size here and let's make a grid layout group like so and we can just to test with let's just have i guess we can make some small panels in here this will be a cell uh, and then if we copy and paste these you can see how they lay out a sort of uh, a grid like this so we can have a bunch of them now i'm not going to be doing it like this but you get the idea as first of all let's change what the cell size is uh, to be fair 100 isn't bad let me try and do 120 maybe add a little bit of spacing in between them like 10 and 10 this way we can see how it looks and i think that works pretty well uh, again i'm not going to be working super hard on making it as nice as possible uh, i really just wanted to to work and you can make it pretty yourself i'm gonna make a ui folder in our prefabs and i'm just gonna put a cell in there because we'll be doing more with that in the future let's also add some kind of item uh, setup i'll just make it let's take for example an image and this i'll just call an item and this is obviously what's going to be inside the cells so if you have some kind of sprite, you can use that. I'm just going to use like a red knob or something for now, just so we can see which ones are occupied, which ones are not. So there we go. And then I guess let me also just make the item here into a prefab. Uh, and let's try and play around with this first. So cool. Let me uh, also quickly copy a cell and remove the item and then just copy paste this a couple of times just so we can use this for testing uh, and then actually also from the player movement what we do right now is we lock the mouse i don't want to do that right now so i'm just gonna comment that out and now let's try and make a new script essentially for the items to make them drag and droppable so let's copy this let's just make it what do we call it uh, inventory item something like that and now this is going to inherit from a few things uh, i think oh that was not very nice. Uh, we need the I begin drag handler, which is part of the Unity event systems. We also want the I drag handler, and we want the I end drag handler. These are essentially some interfaces that we can implement to use for our dragging and dropping to kind of figure out when do we begin dragging something, when while well, are we dragging something, and when are we ending the dragging of something. Now, a few things that we need, uh, I think, to keep track of is we need the private rect transform that we're on right now. And I'm just going to call this direct transform like that. We'll also need a, uh, yeah, let's do a canvas group as well. And then let's do a um, private transform for, let's keep track of the original parent. Seems like it kind of knows what we want to do here a little bit. Uh, cool. And then let's do so in awake. We'll essentially be getting these things that we need, which is the, uh, not necessarily the original parent, but at least the canvas group and the rec transform. So now we are storing those essentially from the very beginning. So we don't have to get those every time. And then when we begin dragging, this is when we want to store the original parent. So I'm going to do original parent equals to transform.parent. Then we're going to take the canvas group and do so that it doesn't block raycast. So we're going to do block raycast equals to false. And then I also essentially want to uh, unparent it. So we want to do uh, yeah rec transform to the root. Yeah, I think that should be fine. Um, and now essentially on drag, what we want to happen is we want the rec transform uh, dot anchor position oops, to have the event data dot delta added. Yeah, okay. Well, it seems like it really does know what it is that we're trying to do. 
And then with the canvas group here, when we let it go again, we want again to add the block raycast back to true so that we can, you know, click on it as we want. And also want to set the uh, parent to the um, original parent again. Cool. I think this should work. And the reason why we're doing this essentially is because we will be overriding essentially how the on end track will function uh, by putting a separate script on the slot itself. So let's also go and do that. So on the inventory item, let's add the inventory item script like so. And let's just save that to the prefab. And on the cell or the slot, let's add an inventory slot script as well, like so. And this one will be very simple. All this one essentially needs is the eyedrop handler, which essentially means this is what we can use to override when the mouse is dropping something that it is actively dragging. And this is where we wanna, first of all, just check and make sure that the event data dot point drag is not null. So we can essentially just say if that is null, we just want to return. And if it's not null, we essentially want to set the transform parent of that uh, to us or to the, to the cell that we're on, I think. This should work for a basic dragging and dropping setup. So let's quickly, first of all, just test this out. Because if I go and hit play, and I now drag this, oh, and I let go on something, you can see, oh, of course, because I didn't add the canvas group to it. Canvas group. And that is interactable, it's visible, and I will hit apply, like so. You see now when we drag it, looks like it's kind of moving half of what we want. So let's try and fix that. I believe this happened because of the scaling factor that we have on the canvas. So let's also just quickly get the canvas like so. And then let's try and do underscore canvas equal to get component in parent just so we can get the nearest canvas like so. And then with the canvas, what we can do is we can essentially divide it by the canvas dot scale factor. I think this should cause it to move correctly now with our mouse. So let's try and start up again, move it around. Yeah, there we go. Now it's following the mouse and when we let go, it essentially childs back to the original, which is not what we wanted. Um, and of course, one thing that I completely forgot is in the event data, we essentially want to check, I think it's called the pointer enter, which is what we're hovering over in the background. So if this is null, or if the event data dot pointer enter, or get component, or I guess try get component we can use, try get component, is not the inventory slot like so. So if it is not that, then we want to go back to our parent here. Um, and regardless, what we also always want to do is we want to make sure that we set the rect transform dot anchored position back to two dot zero, of course, like so. Uh, and we only actually want to do that if we are moving it. So let's just plop this in here as well. And we essentially want to do the same thing in the inventory slot, which will be uh, this. I go, that should do the trick. I think the point of drag, yeah, that's a game object. Okay, cool. So I think maybe this should work. So let's try it out again. You're getting a bit of debugging here as well. As I mentioned, I don't work a lot with UI, so I'm not very good at that. Oh, and that, I guess, immediately goes back. Okay, I guess first of all, oh, that's because I'm doing this on drag. God damn it, it's the wrong thing I modified. <laughs> we wanted, that's my mistake. We wanted it on end drag. And of course we wanted this down here too, like so. That was what we wanted, not what I did up here. This was wrong. Let's try again. I started, I can drag it around, I can drop it and okay. So it, it does indeed jump back to its original. I guess we just have to figure out why does it not call the on drop in here. Uh, well, I guess first of all, we can check the on drop there and we can all, also on end drag like so and then see what it hits. I guess let's put that inside there. And I guess technically we want to do the same thing here. I just want to check what calls now. Just do a little bit of quick debugging. Let's try and get in here. Wait, did I ever add it to the cell? Oh my God. Good Lord, I didn't add inventory slot to the cell. See this? Yeah, don't, don't listen to me. <laughs> that, that's horrible. <laughs> okay, let me just remove the item, copy paste these. Now I can drag this around and now I can drop it on something and I can't pick it up again because we need the canvas group. Um, I guess what we can do is on the point of drag, we can get components out of the inventory item. And then we'll do um, uh, set to uh, set available, I guess we can call it like that. 
and then in the set available in here which will make as like this so i'm in the inventory item now we essentially want the blocks raycast back to true and we also want the rect transform uh, anchor position to be set to zero again as well uh, which is essentially what i will also just want to do here so we just do set available there do that and there we go this should now finally work i think as intended so now we have a bit of a basic drag and drop system we go i'm gonna drag and drop this around drop it on there drop it on there drop it on there yeah and as you can see now we have a drag and drop system that works how we want it all right cool now that i have this set up let me just apply it without any items in there uh, and essentially what we want now is some way to handle the inventory of the player um, now an easy way to do this would probably be to just have some level of sort of inventory manager here that takes in some data so i guess let's just get started on that and we can catch up on the next video Okay, so I'm going to call this one the inventory manager and essentially what I want is I want the uh, inventory item uh, Essentially inventory item, I guess which will be the uh, item item prefab And I want to know uh, what to put them under. What is their parent going to be? Uh, sorry, that's going to be the cells of course So what I want is I essentially want a list of all the cells that we have which will be the inventory slot It will be slots like that so now we can essentially keep track of all of these and we can essentially send some data letting you know which positions have which items and how much of them and so on and so forth. But this is probably a good way to go about it. So one of the ways that we can also do this is we can make a public struct that we can call inventory item data. Uh, and what we want to hold here is we of course want to know what item is it. Uh, now in this case we don't have any items set up. So what I'm just going to have in here for now is public int amount. This way we can also make them stackable which is something we will do a little bit in the future. So what we can do now essentially first is we can make a public uh, actually let's override awake first so if we start by overriding awake and then we'll do instance handler dot register instance if you're not familiar with this i will say go read up on instance handler it's extremely useful and we'll also on destroy we'll unregister instance so instance handler unregister instance and that'll be the inventory manager uh, what we can make is we can make a public void method that will essentially be to um, Sure this is the right way to go but i think what we need is we need a private array to keep track of all the inventory items so i will make an array of inventory item data like so which will be inventory data and i'll call that with an underscore in front like so and so now when we drag and drop something around we'll want to modify this inventory data so what we can do is we can do public void uh, item moved like so and we can also make a public void for add item for example um, and we should probably get an item script of some kind going. I think that would be a good idea. But uh, either way, item moved. We'll need to know what the item is and where we want to move it. But let's continue from this in the next video. I hope this already basic setup makes sense and was able to follow. We obviously haven't done any multiplayer stuff yet. This is just a basic setting up inventory, which again is something I haven't really done before. So let's see what that amounts to. But I hope this was useful to you and we'll continue in the next one. Please do remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe and uh, have a wonderful day.